We all have seen retrieval augmented generation and how it helps us leverage the potential of AI models to ease our lives. But what are the actual problems with the rack today? So the main problem is that coding a pipeline takes a lot of time. On top of that, there are a plethora of choices and steps when it comes to building a rack pipeline. For example, we need to choose an embedding model and we need to do chunking. On top of that, there are quite a few vector DBs in the market today. And after dealing with all of that, we also need to do evaluation and choose the best pipeline that works for our data. When I was looking for a solution for this problem, that was when I came across Vectorize. Vectorize promises to build a rack pipelines 10 times faster than that we usually do. And it does so by providing a nice platform in which we can drag and drop and build this kind of wireframes and build the rack pipelines seamlessly. So in this video, let's look into the Vectorize platform and see how we can go about building and evaluating a rack pipeline. So I'm going to click on try free now. That leads us to platform.vectorize.io and we can log in either by providing our email and password or we can log in with our Google account. So I'm going to log in with my Google account. So once we log in, if we are logging in for the first time, it says welcome to Vectorize and it asks us to do a product tour. So if I click on take the product tour, then it's going to walk us through whatever is possible in the product rack pipeline tour. And the next step is to select a data set. I'm just going to say friends season one and then we can create a rack pipeline. So it's a simple three step process, which I'm going to walk through one by one. So if I click on create rack pipeline, it is creating the pipeline and it leads us to this page. And once the pipeline is created, we can see there's a source connector as it says, each pipeline has at least one source connector. And then we have uh, extraction and chunking strategy where your data will get pre-processed before it's actually loaded into your vector DB. And if I click on next, there is the embedder, which is a embedding model that turns your document into vectors. If I click on next again. We can see that there's a vector database. We can use a built-in vector database provided by Vectorize, or we can bring your own or in other words, we can customize. And if I click on next, it leads us to this page, which is actually the main page where we can play around with these wireframe diagrams. We can customize and we can build our own pipeline. So let's now move on to a problem I faced and build a pipeline for it. So the other day I bought a 4K smart AI TV from Samsung, but the problem is it came with a user manual that is downloadable. And when I downloaded, I found out that is a 284 page user manual and that's quite big. So what I did was I quickly moved to Vectorize and I decided to do a rack pipeline to extract the needed information from the manual. So if we come to the dashboard, we can see that there's build a pipeline here. If I click on that, it leads us to the pipeline building page. I can select a source. There are quite a few options. We can upload from a S3 bucket. We can choose data from say Google Drive and we can also do a file upload. So if I click on file upload, you can see that I've already uploaded the TV manual here. So I'm just going to choose that. So that becomes our source of data. And for the extraction and chunking, we have the fast strategy and we also have the vectorize iris, which is from vectorize and it uses a fine tune model for advanced extraction. For example, if we have a lot of images with text inside them, then this is probably the best model to go for. But for now, I'm going to go for the fast, simple extractor and for this chunking strategy i'm going to stick with paragraph and for the chunk size maybe i'll just reduce that to keep the computations less i'm going to reduce that to 300 and the, for the chunk overlap i'll probably reduce that to 20 and once the extractor and chunker is sorted i'm going to click on the embedder and i'm going to use the built-in embedder for this, which is a recommended one. So I'm just going to click on that. And for the vector DB again, there's vectorize, which is the default uh, vector database. I'm just going to leave it at that. Once we have sorted out the pipeline by setting all the parameters and inputting our document, we can now click on deploy rack pipeline. It's creating the pipeline and it's deploying the pipeline. 
and it will also start the backfilling process. So once the pipeline is deployed, we can hit this page where we can have an overview of the pipeline. Currently, we've just got one document uploaded because it's still backfilling. We don't have any pages and vectors here. And we can also go to the rack sandbox where there is a default system behavior, which is the your helpful AI assistant. There is a default prompt that it comes up with. It says, here's the question you need to answer. There's a question and there is the answer that it needs to come up with. And the different chunks that are extracted by the embedding model will go here. There's also the option to re-rank the responses if you want the response to be re-ranked. If you want the responses to be re-ranked, we can enable it or we can disable it. There is also the option to query rewrite, which I will demonstrate in a minute, but we can enable by default, they both are enabled. And there's also the option to change the K. We can set it to write from one to 10. I'm just gonna leave it to the default five. And we also have the option to change the chat model. It is Llama 3.3 by default, but we can see that there's DeepSeek, there's GPT-4.0, there's OpenAI O3 Mini and Gemini. So I'm just going to leave it with Llama 3.3. I'm just going to save it and I'm ready to chat with my document to ask for a specific query. And once all the processing is complete, we can see that the Rack pipeline status has changed to idle and we can see that all the 284 pages are processed and we have 332 vectors. And if we go under the documents, we can also see that the PDF document that has been processed, the number of pages, the number of embeddings that are written. And also, if you want to reprocess, you can click on reprocess, but I'm obviously not going to do that now. I'm straight away going to jump into the Rack Sandbox. I'm going to ask, how do I establish a wireless network connection? which is an obvious first step whenever we are starting a electronic device at home. Because we set K to five, we can see that this is chunk one, this is chunk two, and we have all the five chunks available here. And they are sorted by the relevancy score. For example, the top one is 0.9530. The next one is 0.89, so on and so forth, because we chose re-rank responses. Because we gave a clear query of how do I establish a wireless network connection, it has not rewritten anything. Let's look at the response that we have got. It has clearly given us the steps we need to follow. You need to go to setting menu, select all settings, then connection, and finally network connection and open the network settings. It's taken that from chunk one, but then it has moved on to chunk three here. Make sure you have a wireless access points name and password setting before attempting to connect. And it has also got information from chunk two here. So it has put together a coherent response by building from all the five responses. So all that we need to read is this in order to understand how we can go about establishing a, a wireless network connection. So if I really want to make use of query rewriting, I just have to enable that and I'm going to say dub wireless networking. In this case, we can see that it has rewritten the query as to how do I establish a wireless network connection including the necessary settings and information needed for the connection. So it has rewritten the prompt into this and it has given a nice coherent answer again. In terms of some of the other features that it has got, we can seamlessly integrate Vectorize with any software that you have got. For example, if we go under connect, we can see that there's the option to retrieve. And more importantly, we have the API connections and also AI integrations. For example, if you want to use the vectorized client in Python, then all you have to do is pip install and then your API key, and you can connect with the vectorized client straight away using this command. And you will have to give the pipeline ID, which is created here for any of your pipeline. For example, this pipeline I've just created, let's say TV pipeline. And for this pipeline, we have got this pipeline ID. I can copy that and I can just use this code to get the response using the vectorized client. There's also this nice AI integration option, particularly the OpenAI 
OpenAI SDK. We can install OpenAI as we normally install. And for the OpenAI API key, we need to use the vectorize token and instead of the OpenAI token. And once we have done that, it's the same OpenAI boilerplate code, but for the base URL, we need to use the api.vectorize.io. We have to pass the pipeline ID that is specific for your pipeline, and we will get the response and use it anywhere else in your software. And if you're building chatbot as well, you can choose the Llama provider, you can choose the language. So from Connect, if we go under documents, we can see that it has got the document that we have uploaded. And if you have hundreds of documents, you, you can even search for a specific document here and you can reprocess it. So all this that I have shown until now is free of cost, but if you actually want to schedule something to run automatically, then you'll have to upgrade to a starter or pro plan to enable automatic syncs. For example, if you have a system with like hundreds of documents and your document is constantly getting updated, you know, with new data, then you will have to go for the schedule. And there's also a performance dashboard where you can actually look into the retrieval performance analytics data. And that is also part of the pro plan where you can look into the performance insights. So that pretty much brings us to the end of this video about Vectorize. I indeed managed to build RAG applications 10 times faster. If you're interested, do try it out for free and I will see you in my next video. Take care.